The Black Boy has been displayed in the International Slavery Museum since 2007. Our gallery has come a long way since then. So what does it mean to have his portrait in our museum today? I think that the artwork has been somewhat uh, anonymous since the museum opened in 2007. It is a significant portrait in that it's one of the few that we have depicting a black person in the actual International Slavery Museum. I think it could be the only one of an actual individual black sitter. The title of the painting is The Black Boy and unfortunately it anonymises our sitter and it doesn't really lead us to be able to identify him very easily. And it really impacts our interpretation and understanding of the portrait because he is defined solely by his heritage. The research that you began to do makes people stop and think and really consider this person, this individual human being, which I think is an important part of humanising him as an individual. Acknowledging that anonymity is an important starting point and then beginning to do work considering who this person might have been is part of the process to rehumanising that individual. And considering as well, like, the artwork as a brilliant piece of art as well because as we've spoken about it is a beautiful painting that's really well crafted so for people to actually stop and engage I think is an important starting point. His story is so connected to the story of Liverpool and in particular the black community of Liverpool and he's connected to this incredible history of seafarers that we have here. Yeah exactly I mean the very existence of that painting I think points out uh, an important fact that Liverpool has this long-standing black community and that community has come about as a result of Liverpool being a global city. And Liverpool is also a global city as a result of its connections to transatlantic slavery. And I don't think that's something that can be forgotten. So, Rebecca, when the portrait came into the walker, it looked quite different to what we have today. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, well, it seems that the top was quite damaged. We can see from the x-ray because it's quite jagged where it's been cut down. Uh, the right edge is quite smooth um, and straight, so it looks like the damage was all along the top. So presumably, when they cut the top off, they've made it into a more conventional sort of portrait dimensions. So we recently did some tests on um, the portrait, and we can see that the colours and the tones used to look quite different. Yes, yeah, the background at the moment looks like it's got a sort of greenish tinge to it, and that's really the discoloured varnish. It should be slightly bluer, and the x-rays that we have of the portrait have been really fascinating, haven't they? And we can see about four different faces um, in the canvas that we can see. So can you describe kind of whereabouts they are? That's where there's one face. Um, and then there's another face here. Basically, it's all the areas that have got really pronounced drying cracks and wrinkling. And in the notes that we have as well, the retouching that they did in the 1940s, they describe retouching the sleeve but also the head and from our images we can see the retouching on the sleeve quite clearly but not so much the face as well. Yeah that's unfortunate because there is, it sort of looks like a scar here which I can't see as it can be original but we, we, you can't really see that in the UV photograph but that's largely because the varnish is so thick so it doesn't mean that that's not overpaint. it just means that it's underneath the current varnish. There's a story attached to the painting that William Windus found the boy on the steps of a place called the Monument Hotel in Liverpool and that he employed him as an errand boy and that's how the portrait came about. And we were trying to discover where the Monument Hotel was originally and you discovered some really fascinating information. Yes, so I was vaguely familiar with the name of the Monument Hotel because there is a Monument Square in Liverpool which is uh, dedicated to King George III. I looked through some archival records to find that indeed there was a hotel of that name. The structure is still there, the exterior is still extant. So I thought I would look at the census records. And lo and behold, who should be residing at the Monument Hotel but a portrait artist called William Lindsay Windus. The Monument Hotel on London Road was a coaching house. People were coming and going. It was a place that people stayed on their travels. And so it's not inconceivable that this could have been a boy who was from one of the ships who'd ended up in a place like that. But there is also a possibility that he was a native Liverpoolian. Black people had lived in Liverpool for more than 140 years before this painting is made by Windus. We also have records from orphanages at the time which show that people of colour and people of African heritage were living in the city in the 1830s, 1840s. 
I initially assumed that this was a middle-class artist going into the parts of Liverpool that maybe someone who was from a more wealthy background wouldn't go every day. This is what we might call like a working class artist in William Windus who is painting scenes from his everyday life. And I think it's also important within that to show that there were black people in Liverpool in the 1840s. portrait itself is quite unique in terms of British portraiture. We have a single subject but a young black child filling the frame and the composition is very interesting, isn't it? I think it's a beautiful composition and it's also a composition that encourages the audience to be very sympathetic to the sitter. The fact that he's sitting down and his eyes are gazing right out at all the passers-by means that it's going to engage anyone that comes into contact with the work. And one of the other things that you notice about the work is that there's a little flash of red just on what would be our right hand side as we look at the work. And that flash of red is very symbolic of issues of purity and truth and justice because it's a religious symbol in a lot of portraiture of this time. Artists like Windus were looking for realism. They were looking for people who could represent the everyday. So the quotidian lifestyle of a young black person would have been um, an ideal and a very novel and innovative subject matter for the artist to focus on. So the fact that this is pared down and it's just the boy with very little in the rear ground so that you can focus pointedly on the facial features, the clothing and the appearance of the child in a seated pose is really, really important. Something that Windus does so well in this portrait is that use of chiaroscuro. So we've got that beautiful kind of quite direct light coming from the right hand side. It shows that Windus was paying a lot of attention to the depth of the skin tone. Absolutely, Kate. That is one of the most important parts of this portrait. To illuminate a child's face is almost allegorical of innocence as well as the vulnerability of that subject. Within genre painting, people were interested in telling a narrative, particularly a moralistic one, that took the uh, spectator on a journey from usually issues to do with immorality into morality. And in this particular work, there is that semblance of genre painting too. So on the left, what you can see is a torn sleeve depicting the poverty, the impoverishment of the child. But as you progress to the right of the picture, you can see on the right-hand side a complete sleeve, illuminated again by that light, showing a white purity, showing that this child is on a transition from impoverishment through a moral transition to purity. And it also represents the way the artist was thinking at the time. So Windus was also very concerned with issues of moralism, realism, purity, representation of truth. And that is depicted in the narrative of this piece from left to right and also from top to bottom. So you see the illuminated face and then right through to the toes and the feet that are much more muted and darker toned. What can we know about the experiences of black people or children during that time who might have been models for artists at that time? And what can these images such as this one tell us about their lives? A single figure portrait of a child is very, very rare, particularly a person of colour. He appears as a street urchin. And so this is a unique portrait, I believe, because it's talking about the north of England, it's talking about a stowaway, potentially, who has found himself in Britain, perhaps under the age of 10, a very young child, alone, in an unfamiliar surrounding. So for that reason alone, it's extremely unique. Mm -hmm. 